Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And today we are looking at the uh, readings for March 19th, uh, 2023, uh, the fourth Sunday in Lent. And uh, our text is Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Uh, which is uh, the uh, parable of uh, the ten bridesmaids. But there's also the addition of the parable of the talents, which would take you all the way through uh, verse 30. And uh, so uh, depending on how much time you want to spend on this, you can do uh, one or both uh, uh, and, uh, and have a, a rather lengthy explanation once again of what is the kingdom of heaven like and a recognition in this particular uh, reading of what it means to be patient and prepared for the meantime until Christ returns. So let's let's talk about the bridesmaids uh, parable first. Uh, and it begins in a similar way to uh, the other parables that we've been talking about this Lenten season then the kingdom of heaven will be like this, right? The kingdom of heaven, that, uh, that time uh, when God's will, uh, God's preferred future breaks into our world, as, as you put it, Rolf. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps, went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Um, the foolish don't take any oil with them, and so their lamps go out because the bridegroom is delayed. Uh, all of them uh, fall asleep. Uh, and the wise bridesmaids uh, have brought oil with them. They uh, have enough to, uh, to trim their lamps, uh, uh, and so they're allowed into the wedding banquet. But the foolish bridesmaids are not. Uh, he says, the, the, the uh, bridegroom says, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. And then the lesson uh, at the end, keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Now, you have to sing, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. That's just a requirement on this <laughs> on this Sunday. <laughs> keep your lamps trimmed and burning. We're going to come back to that. Yeah. Um, so where, where's the good news in this? I, I, I want to ask, right? Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. I think that line is 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 the good news. It's a warning for us to be attentive and ready, uh, as opposed to this sense of, okay, it, it, I guess I'd put it this way: uh, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. And then, <laughs> so it's like, okay, I get it. This is the promise that God is giving me. But can I, can I have one more day on earth? Well, maybe one more year. You know, maybe another day. How about another, you know, quarter of a century? And and so what are you going to do in that meantime? Are we going to live a life that demonstrates that we are on this road to being with the with the, with the the king eternally? Uh, Ralph, you Here's my take on it. it. Um, one of the interesting things, I think, about being in the narrative lectionary as opposed to the advised common lectionary is that these parables about the second coming or about waiting for the second coming happen in Lent before Holy Week rather than in November before the end of the church year because this is where they occur in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 24, it's been set up. About that day and hour, the second coming, no one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the sun. It's interesting, of course, uh, Christologically, but that's not the point here. Only the Father. And now we're about to get to, in a couple weeks in Lent, in two weeks we'll get to uh, Palm Sunday and then we'll get to the story of the Passion and the Crucifixion. That's where they are in this gospel. And so we're actually getting them in the narrative lectionary in the correct narrative context. And so this is about in some ways, looking forward to that which the disciples did not expect to happen, mm -hmm. um, the death of the Messiah that they're following, because they don't, they don't know this is happening, even though he's explained it three times. And I really think the song, uh, I was going to set it up like this, uh, Catherine. I was going to say, 
on my iPad, because it's where I keep my Bible and my Bible commentaries, I'm going to open a different program for the best commentary, which is my OnSong program, which is the iPad program most uh, praise bands in America use. Okay. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. And, and this the song gets it. The song gets that this is about waiting for the second coming, uh, and mm-hmm. which is also the first coming. Because it starts, troubles and trials almost over, and that's repeated. See what my Lord has done. And then the, the chorus is, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. See what the Lord has done. And what I like that says about the Christian life, don't be watching the clouds, waiting for the coming. Uh, look around. Troubles and trials are almost over, but the Lord's mm. acting. The look, look around and see what the Lord has done. And to me, maybe that's what it means. What does it mean in the Christian life to be the wise bridesmaids who bring the oil and keep their lamps trimmed? By the way, you might want to run to your local hardware store and buy a lamp so that, because people don't know what that means anymore, right? You turn, yeah. now you can turn the wick down because if it's if it's up too high, too much oil burns right. off too fast. And, and it smokes. Get that. Right. And right. it right. smokes, yeah. Right. But it means reducing the light. So it lasts longer. And maybe that's what it means to live in um, times when it's hard to see, but see what the Lord has done. I like that. To me, it's brilliant. And if you put it in the, in the historical con- con- uh, context of uh, uh, African-Americans uh, seeking freedom, um, you had to be prepared because you didn't know when that opportunity for you to escape mm. slavery and mm. so it's, it's a very practical song in that sense. Um, in the main times that I'm living in right now, I, I know it's not forever and I'm going to be ready. And I want, I was ready yesterday, but <clears throat> you know, they didn't come for me yesterday and they didn't come, you know, and, but I've got to be ready. I've got to have a bad bag packed. I've got to be able to, to leave on a moment's notice. But leaving on a moment's notice means being prepared. And to take it back to the text, uh, a part of that wisdom is when those who had brought more oil were asked, you know, give us some of yours. They knew. We don't know the time. We don't know how much longer we're going to have to wait. And if we give you what we have prepared, then all of us are at risk. And, and so there's a double wisdom in there. They didn't know how long they were going to have to wait. They were prepared to wait. Um, you could go in immediately, and they didn't give that up because someone else was not prepared and said, well, just give us some. It, it's like, no, we're, we're really going to be wise about this. Um, there's a harshness to it, but there's also a hopefulness to it. We, say more about that, Joy. Where do you see the hopefulness? The hopefulness the... is what does it mean for us to live right in mm. these, in these in this time? So this is we've been talking about this season of of Lent, uh, where we've been talking about generosity. We've been talking about forgiveness, and you would think that this particular text would say, um, well, the generosity would be, uh, the grace would be. But if you remember, I believe it was on our Ash Wednesday podcast, Catherine, you asked the question, does this mean that we're supposed to be a doormat? And the answer is right here, absolutely not. Being gracious, being wise is not being a doormat. Mm. Yeah, that's that's helpful. This... Uh... This idea of being ready. I, I'm thinking the the song, uh, the chorus, keep your lamps trimmed and burning for the time is drawing nigh mm-hmm. is the is the line that I remember. But I like the I like that other one. The see what the Lord has done. See what my Lord has done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, by the way, because this is a song of the enslaved um, African Americans in the oral tradition, there are many versions of exactly. it. Exactly. So, so there's so, no. There's no, we don't, it's anonymous, whoever first sung this, and it's and it's built on an oral culture, so it always changes. Right. So, yeah, so there's lots of versions. So what's the version that the, you remember? The time is drawing nigh. Yeah, the, well, that's good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's the, it's the, 
especially in the context of what uh, comes immediately before it, which we we didn't assign in the narrative lectionary, but the this kind of little apocalypse, right, uh, in, in chapter 24, speaking of the coming of the Son of Man, uh, the, the good news is God is coming in judgment, right? <laughs> uh, I think about Psalms 96 and 98, I believe, that talk about um, uh, the hills clapping for joy and the, the trees uh, singing uh, and, and uh, you know, the oceans and the mountains and all that inhabits them breaking into the hallelujah chorus. Why? Because the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming uh, in judgment, which to us humans doesn't sound like such good news, right? Uh, But to the rest of creation, which is damaged by human sin, uh, this is great good news indeed that the the Lord is coming. The time is drawing nigh. So be ready. Uh, keep awake, uh, Jesus says at the end of the parable. Uh, the time is drawing nigh. So live in this way. Live in this upside down kingdom way of forgiveness and reconciliation and um, uh, and generosity. So that when uh, when the Lord does appear. Um, we're invited into the wedding banquet. If we yeah, take... because in the terms of the second coming, that is the end of sin. Right. In terms of the first coming, it is the victory over sin that now is already and not yet. Mm-hmm. And so this parable is both about the soon to happen night in which Jesus is betrayed and handed over in that long night and then crucified and uh, and in Matthew in the darkness of midday but then light comes and we who live in the already not yet um, well you've already said it I can't improve on any of uh, what the two of you already said 